The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And we read together from Psalm 110. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool. May the Lord stretch forth the scepter of your power, rule from Zion in the midst of your enemies. Noble are you on this, the day of your birth, on the holy mountain, from the womb of the dawn, the dew of your new birth is upon you. The Lord has sworn and will not retract. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The king at your right hand, O Lord, shall smite down your kings in the day of his wrath. In all his majesty he shall judge among the nations, smiting heads over the wide earth. He shall drink from the brook beside the way, therefore shall he lift his high his head. Some say this is a psalm that was uh, used for the uh, coronation of kings, or perhaps on the birth of the royal son, the son who was due to become king. If so, it's massive hyperbole. It's, it's, it's going over the top. Um, I think this is a psalm about the Messiah. It's a messianic psalm. The Messiah will do these things. He'll be the great king who comes to judge among nations. And so uh, this is a psalm about Jesus predicting him and talking about his great reign upon the earth. Perhaps this is a psalm we should read at Christmas time because it does speak about the day of his birth. Psalm 111, Alleluia. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the faithful in the congregation. The words of the Lord are great, sought out by all who delight in him. His work is full of majesty and honour, and his righteousness endures forever. He appointed a memorial for his marvellous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gave food to those who feared him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He showed his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice, and all his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever. They are done in truth and equity. He set redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of those who live by it is praise endures forever. Psalm 112. Alleluia. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Their descendants shall be mighty in the land, a generation of the faithful that will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. Light shines in the darkness of the upright. Um, gracious and full of compassion are the righteous. It goes well with those who are generous in lending, and order their affairs with justice, for they shall never be shaken. The righteous will be held in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil tidings. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their heart is sustained and will not fear until they see the downfall of their foes. They have, been, they have given freely to the poor. Their righteousness stands fast forever. Their head will be exalted with honour. The wicked shall see it and be angry. They shall gnash their teeth in despair. The desire of the wicked shall perish. It's almost counterintuitive. The righteous will have wealth and riches in their house and their righteousness endures forever. Yet, they are generous in lending. Those who are generous, who give freely, receive freely. Proverbs 18, chapter, uh, verse 10 until the end of the chapter. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. The wealth of the rich is their strong city. In their imagination it is like a high wall. But destruction, before destruction one's heart is haughty, but humility goes before honour. If one gives answer before hearing, it is folly and shame. 
human spirit will endure sickness, but a broken spirit who can bear? An intelligent mind acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A gift opens doors. It gives access to the great. The one who first states a case seems right, until the other comes and cross-examines. Casting the lot puts an end to disputes and decides between powerful contenders. An ally is stronger than a city. An ally offended is stronger than a city. Such quarrelling is like the bars of a castle. From the fruit of the lips one's stomach is satisfied. The yield of the lips brings satisfaction. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favour from the Lord. The poor use entreaties, but the rich answer roughly. Some friends play a friendship, but a true friend sticks closer than one's nearest kin. So much in there, isn't there? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Well, the, the wealth of the rich is... The rich is their strong city. In their imagination, it is like a high wall. We depend upon the Lord, not upon the riches of this world. Our trust is in him. Mark chapter 7, 14 to 23. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. When he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about the parable. He said to them, Then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart but the stomach and goes out into the sewer? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, It is not what comes out of a it is not it is it is not what comes out of a person that defiles. It for it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly, all these things come from within, and they defile the person. Here Jesus said that our actions reflect our hearts, and so it's important to get our hearts right with God, and to allow God's word to penetrate and to fill our lives, and to allow his spirit to permeate every part of us, that our hearts may be full of righteousness, and out of them will come righteous acts. We'll be clean and pure before God. Regardless of what we eat, the actions will reflect hearts dedicated to him. Lord, we lift up to you today and we pray, Lord, that you will make our hearts right before you, that you will be at work in us, that, Lord, we may be your people. Lord, we pray that you will uh, act in our lives uh, in such a way that your spirit will permeate every part of us, that we will live righteously before you. So, Lord, we dedicate to you our lives and we give them over to you and pray, Lord, that you will take full control. Almighty and everlasting God, you are, almost, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those things which we are not worthy to ask but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>